Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the second Summer 2023 update from Gas Weatherby. So here we go again, time to bring you another Summer Update. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, we're up to update number two. We'll be showing, showing you February data for this one. Who would have thought that? Follows on from uh, last week, of course, when we did the uh, stratospheric slash February uh, day to the first update. So uh, I should get some of that for you. In a moment. Just to say that the first, I'm so sorry, but I'm a bit giddy tonight. To say that the first video today was our uh, 6 a.m. upload, and we've got a day the day with all of the great features coming to you later on this afternoon. So please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so very much, everybody. Thank you so much to Shryan for getting all of our years together for us on this update. Thank you so much to Shryan Brian for sorting out the years, and thank you so much to Richard. For the, uh, for the summer updates gift. I love it, Rich. I love, love, love the gift. Uh, Rich and I have been talking and we've decided that the guy who's getting away from it all, you know, getting away from the madness, <laughs> getting away from sports presenters going on strike, getting away <laughs> from, um, you know, uh, the gruesome twosome in California, H&M, getting away from the bills, you know, the con Constant, never ending <laughs> uh, bills, isn't he, Rich? Just going to a desert island and getting away from the madness. Who wouldn't want to do that, eh? Who would want to do that? Anyway, thank you so much, Rich, um, for our lovely summer 2023 updates gear. Thanks so much, Rich. And thanks you to Shryan as well. Hashtag Team Gal. Working away as always. Right, well, we'll get off with your second update. Now, that's been an intro, wasn't it? Let's go on your second summer update, shall we? So, we're going to start off having a look at the uh, Central England temperature. So, uh, February uh, 2023 CT came out at 6.5. That was 2.7 degrees above average, exceptionally mild February. And so our first set of analogs going to be looking at uh, summers following February's with a CT range of 6.0 to 7.0. Nice and, you know, nice and central. That and places the uh, February just gone, 2023, nicely slap bang in the middle of that range. Okay, let's do that then. So uh, our first uh, year, our first February, within that CT range of 6.0 to 7.0 is uh, 1961. The summer of 1961 is looking like this, rather mixed, as most of them uh, were, to be honest, in the uh, 1960s, a little bit on the unsettled and cool side. High pressure away to our west, south, west, low pressure our north and east winds coming in from a west or a north westerly direction. So a bit of a mixed, unsettled summer, summer even to start us off. Our next summer is much better. This is 1989. Brave high pressure above our right centre over the country and low pressure away to the north. The thing with this summer. 1989, you know, it is very extended. It gets going after cold April. It gets going in May with a warm, dry, summer-like May. And it's still going right way into September and October. A very long, extended summer in 1989. Then a little bit of a cooler and more mixed August in the middle of that. But overall, that is a hot, dry summer there at the end of the 1980s, following February City range of 6.0 to 7.0. Our next summer is 1995, and what a classic this one is. Goodness gracious me, look at this. Above average heights, high pressure centre right over top of the UK and Ireland. Long, long, hot summer that, in some ways comparable to 76, although not quite as hot as 1976, although it was actually a bit drier down uh, the summer of 1976. One of the best summers of, of uh, anybody's lifetime. Anyway, if we had another repeat of 1995, we would be in for a very long, hot, dry uh, summer. Goodness gracious. And then we've got 1997. This is another pretty hot summer. Well, it gets hot later on in it, anyway. Uh, so it has a Scandinavian high, low pressure to the south, the winds in from the east. This has a hot August. 995 also has a hot August, by the way. Uh, so two hot August there 
uh, for 95 and also for 1997 following these uh, bed bricks with city range of 6.0 7.0 it is quite a wet summer 1997 even the very hot August you know has lots of thunderstorms um, out within the heat and humidity but nevertheless that is another hot summer uh, that we have there now don't have a much more mixed summer in 2000 it does have some uh, warmer weather at times um, that has high pressure to our west northwest low pressure to our east and south so, best hot spells, you know, little heat waves that occur relatively frequently through the summer, but it does have quite a poor July, quite a cool and unsettled July. Um, it's one of those summers that's a little bit in between, in between but it does have some uh, decent weather within it. We've got the uh, summer of, 20, of 2002 uh, next, with below average heights again, extending through the west of uh, Europe, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic and over towards Scandinavia. That's still a quite warm summer uh, as well. Um, has a very hot spell late July uh, in 2002. But it is mixed. It has quite a bit of rain, especially early on in the summer. I think June 2002 is uh, quite a wet month. 2011 is a pretty poor summer, to be honest. So uh, it has like uh, mid-Atlantic ridge go up to Greenland. And uh, uh, plenty of blocking within high latitudes as well. Top of low pressure over the UK and West Europe. That's quite a poor summer in uh, 2011. 2014 is a very unusual, very strange summer in that it has a hot July or a very, very warm July, um, followed by a, a really cool August. August 2014 was the coolest since 1993. The overall summer analogue has quite a lot of uh, northern high latitude blocking with below average heights, low pressure to the south, the winds in from an easterly direction. But I don't think the overall analogue tells you everything that you need to know about that. So, because you would look at that and you wouldn't think there's much in the way of warm weather. Actually, we do have a very, very warm and pretty dry, uh, hot July in 2014, but it very quick goes down the tubes in, <laughs> in August. I've got 2017, which is a classic front loaded summer. Uh, and by that, we mean that the warmest weather is occurring in the front part of the summer, the earlier part of the summer. And then it deteriorates and goes uh, much cooler and wetter uh, later on, particularly so in August and through to September, actually. So the overall analogue for summer 2017 looks like this, with above average heights again to the south, below average heights to the north, and all looking rather westerly and so on. It has, a, has very warm weather in June to early July, often quite hot, and then, as I say, it goes down the pan later on in the summer. Um, our next summer, following February season range of 6.0 to 7.0, 2019, see how many there have been over recent years. It's very striking how February has uh, been very mild over uh, recent years. So uh, 2019, of course, has that tremendous heat wave in, uh, in July of, uh, of 2019. It's a mixed summer, uh, above average heights to the west, connecting back to northern blocking below, above average heights to the east, I should say, connecting back to, to northern blocking, below average heights to the west, winds often frequently coming up from a southerly direction. So it's one of those summers, we've had a lot of them recently, they have heat spikes, you know, uh, with dramatic uh, uh, heat waves that last a few days, dramatic Spanish blooms, um, and then going cooler and more unsettled for a few days, and then back to hot weather, and, you know, very much uh, in, in that mode in the summer of 2019. Summer 2020 is a rather mixed summer, but again, it does have uh, quite a few heat spikes. So there's a bit of everything in this summer. Sometimes it's a very hot weather, sometimes it's a very cool and unsettled weather. Overall, tend to get above average heights out to our west, so below average heights over the country, and above average heights to the northeast. So you see how mixed the summer of 2020 is going to be overall. And then we've got last summer, finally. Um, no, uh, this again, following. February C T of 6.0, 7.0, got summer of 2022, which is, of course, a long, hot summer with high pressure from uh, the west extending into western and also uh, northern Europe as well. Plenty of anti-cyclonic influences. So we get uh, we get a hot July, we get a hot and dry August, the first hot and dry August that we've had since 2003, first 18 Celsius C T August. It's a remarkable summer that we had uh, last year. And yes, it does follow a February C T range of 6.0 to 7.0.
Right, putting all of that together then, this is how all Junes combined are looking, following a February City range of 6.0 to 7.0. Generally quite mixed for these Junes, with below average heights through Western Europe. We do see a Scandinavian high signal though, and because of that, Often these dunes could be quite warm, uh, so maybe quite volatile, really, with the below average heights to the west, with above average heights to the east, potting up winds from the south. Often quite warm, often quite humid, potentially quite volatile. All July's combined uh, shows a more anti-cyclonic signal. The high pressure tending to be a little bit to our west, but overall I don't think that's too bad, but below average heights away. To the east. I think that papers are relatively warm and dry. Uh, July, sometimes both Julys could be very hot as well. Not always, but sometimes uh, they uh, they could be there. And then uh, all August uh, combined also shown an anti cyclone seal. So overall, we probably a bit of analogs favour like a warmer, drier summer with high pressure on Scandinavia and winds coming in from an easterly direction. So a lot of the time those Augusts could be dry and potentially very warm or hot. So August, uh, June a bit thundering, and then July, August more anti-cyclonic, uh, very warm, potentially quite hot, a lot of those, and uh, relatively dry as well. So all summers combined are looking following February season range of 6.0, 7.0, and we tend to have an anti-cyclonic signal above average heights extending in from the Atlantic to Scandinavia. So winds often coming from an easterly direction. Of course, that is very warm, hot, potentially hot wind direction in the summer. Right, so that was an interesting uh, set to start us off, wasn't it? Uh, what do you think about that then, everyone? Very interesting, I thought. Um, we are going to carry on now, and uh, we're going to have a look at the top 10 driest uh, Februarys for England and Wales precipitations. So, uh, yes, let's do that, shall we? So, uh, this is the England and Wales precipitation page, uh, precipitation page, I should say, uh, from uh, the uh, UK Met. England and Wales P goes away back to 1766. There is the year of 1766, so we see every year's worth of England Wales precipitation right from like 2023 to, um, to 1766 there one of the oldest uh, you know measurements on record in terms of precipitation but we come down to the very bottom and we can see that February was an exceptionally dry month February 2023 came out with England Wales precipitation of just 16.5 millimetres. Pretty gracious me. And that does place it well and truly within the top 10 uh, driest uh, February since 1950. And probably top 10 driest February, uh, you know, right way back 1766, to be honest. Um, no, uh, we're going to count down now the uh, top 10 driest uh, February's, and you'll see the summer. Summers that follow those uh, February. So here we go, pop pickers. Da, 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 da. Not off. Uh, right, so, I'm so sorry. We have the summer of uh, 2012 uh, at number 10. At uh, number 10, got 2012. So this is the summer 2012. A pretty bad summer. So the south, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is a cool and wet summer combined with <laughs> loads of blocking around Greenland. So a very wet and unsettled summer to begin. Then at number nine, we've got 1985. And goodness gracious me, this looks <laughs> pretty grim uh, as well. Deep low pressure. Over top of the UK and Ireland, a very unsettled, cool, wet summer in uh, 1985. At number eight, we've got 1952 pop pickers. Da, 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 da. Uh, so this one with below average heights uh, over and to the north. And it was fluff, wasn't it? Alan Fluff Freeman. Uh, below average heights to our north and east, above average heights. Uh, so I I was a bit giddy, didn't I, tonight? I am a little bit giddy, I have to say. Um, right, so this is a cool and uh, mixed summer with winds in from a north to northwest direction. Come on, do the day job, be sensible, Dad, be sensible. At number seven, we've got 1956, and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, look at this. Uh, deep <laughs> Over uh, not just UK but whole Northwest Europe. One of the worst summers of the 20th century, actually. That 
and date does follow the 7th driest uh, February on record. Right, where are we there? Right, at number 6, we've got 1998, which is another pretty grim summer. We had a lot of good summers in the 1990s, but this one, um, you know, this one's one of the worst summers of the 1990s. 98 and 93, or 93 and 1998, they have the two, you know, worst summers, I think, of the 1990s. Uh, and there it is, 19. 98 okay at number five we've got 1986 uh this other summer of 1986 is uh looking so um it's a bit mixed you know we've got some above heights just there and up there but also some low pressure there the thing with that sir is it has a very anti-cyclonic not particularly hot but quite warm June, and then it has an absolute deluge August, and August 1986 is one of the coldest and wettest August of the 20th century, so, um, you know, you pay your money and you pay, pay your choice, I suppose, a bit of a front-loaded summer with that one. At number four, oh, wow, 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 we've got 2023, look at that. Or should I say 2023? Um, so the uh, February 2023 uh, was actually the fourth driest February since 1950. Wow, wow, wow. And what does summer 2023 have in store? Well, there we go. There's the question marks. Um, we shall see. That's what we're trying to answer. But at the moment, we've got lots of questions to answer. Thank you so much, Ryan for uh, our summer 2023 um, analogue there. At number three, <laughs> we've got 1965. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, February 1965 was the third uh, dry February since 1915. And the summer of 1965 is atrocious again. Really, really bad summer. Most of them in the 1960s were, but 1965 was particularly bad. Cold and wet summer with that one. At number two, oh, there it is, uh, 1993. <laughs> I was just talking about that, wasn't I? So the two worst summers of the 1990s, they both appear uh, in our top 10 driest February's countdown. But because <laughs> uh, this one, below average heights to the uh, east, above average heights out to the west. So um, it does have a nice tune, though. It does have that going for it. Uh, but when we get cold front dropping southwards around the 8th of July, after that, the rest of the summer is uh, <laughs> just a little bit of a ride off. It's not a particularly wet summer, just really quite a cool summer winds, often in from a northwesterly direction. Most days are quite cloudy and, and cool and chilly in uh, both July and August of 1993. And then at number one, here it is. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Yes, the uh, driest of February since 1950 uh, at number one is 1959. And the summer of 1959, finally, 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 we have a decent summer, <laughs> summer uh, here. This is a little bit like 1989, very extended summer. It gets going in the uh, in the spring, you know, in May, and uh, it's still going in September and October as well. Overall, it's a very warm and dry summer that we have in 1959. Lots of days that are very warm or hot and uh, loads of dry weather to be enjoyed as well. So we do get, <laughs> we do finally get a decent summer there at number one. Right, putting all that together, finally, lastly, this is how all June combined are looking following the uh, top ten driest Februarys. So the June's very unsettled signal overall. Lots of low pressure. <laughs> You're not be surprised. Lots of low pressure being unsettled weather. That's how all July combined uh, looks. Uh, again, it's not very good, is it? Um, with a little bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge, low pressure to the east, winds coming in from uh, the north, so a cool, cold, wet signal for those Julys, and it doesn't get much better for August either. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, we're below average heights <laughs> over the north and west of Europe, above average heights of the Atlantic, going up towards Greenland. 
Um, the only thing to say about this is it does have quite a few Carl Winters in the mix. So, uh, like, got 1956, etc. Carl February, 1986, again, exceptionally Carl February. That's why they're dry months, because you know, they are so very, very cold. 1985 is also a very cold winter. We have not had a very cold winter. So, you know, how relevant this, this set is, um, I don't know. But but there we go. That's what the data is showing. A very uh, grim-looking signal. And finally, all summers combined. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, has a very uh, a cyclonic, very low-pressure dominated scene with lots of lows over and to the east of uh, the country there. And uh, that's it. Wow, wow, wow. That is your uh, second summer 2023 update. Very, very contrasting sets of analogs there between those two. Interesting, wasn't it? The first set, the CT set, you know, much, much, uh, looking much better for summer, much warmer. And then the second set, absolutely atrocious. Very unusual that you'll get two sets that are so contrasting within the CT and, and rainfall data. So, Quite an unusual update this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it managed to entertain you. Um, if you did, then please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody. If you did that, you will see more summer updates coming up, uh, you know, through the rest of um, the spring until we get to the end of May. And then we will release our summer uh, forecast. I'll probably have a date for you next week, actually, that we'll be releasing the Gas World Bid Summer 2023 uh, forecast. So uh, that will be... Reveal all oh, will be real. Gav will reveal all. Oh, goodness gracious me. Um, <laughs> next Sunday. Thank you so much, Richard, for the wonderful summer updates. Dear. Thank you so much to Shrian for getting all of those years together uh, for us. And uh, yeah, please give us a sub if you have found this video informative and entertaining. Uh, tell your friends and fans to subscribe as well. We will be back a little bit later on uh, with the 10 to 14 there. But for the second summer 2023 update, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.